We were recently commissioned by Security News Desk, a security news company, to create an A3 print newspaper for them. But I thought I'd just talk you through the process a bit and show you how we laid it out in InDesign. So the first thing that we had to do was have an editorial meeting to decide what went into the paper and the theme of the newspaper because all the articles had to be about a similar topic and plan where we get the ads in and the flat plan. So this is a flat plan and basically it's just a layout of each page, really basic showing where the articles are going to go and where the adverts are going to go. So once we've got the flat plan and the content, we then have to wait for people to send us in articles, adverts, columns, uh, images and all the content for the paper. So once we've got the content, we then have to edit it and then when it's finally been edited, we go into InDesign. So this is the InDesign document and we've got a template that we use for the newspaper. We keep the same template but we just change the content so we just save as the next issue. So I'll just go through and show you. There's a lot of content in there. So the first thing we do is to take out all the old content and then we put in the new content. So I'll just do this one as an example. So we go in and we just add a text box. Now the good thing about this template is all the body copy and the headings and all the formatting is already programmed in. So we don't have to worry about finding fonts and sizes and stuff. So if I open up an article and just copy and paste into InDesign, select it all, go to paragraph settings, and there you've got all the options. You can see you've got the different formats for the body copy and the captions, headers, panels, etc. So body indent. And then you can change the header size. And you've also got things like columns. So it's quite straightforward actually to go through and do it. But the main difficulty with it is tweaking it because if we take this article here, now we have to try and make it fit. So if you resize the box there, we've got three lines over. Resize it again and it fits. Now there we've been lucky. Um, that didn't really happen a lot during the actual process. So we then had to go through and edit it. And there's a few things that I had to pay attention to. For example, the spacing around the images. Um, initially, I didn't do this enough and it looked too squashed and compact. So we can actually change the spacing there in the text wrap so that all the images have two millimeters around them. And you've also got heading titles and the spacing between the heading and the text. So there's a lot to go through and it's quite time consuming and you have to pay real close attention to detail. But I mean, at the end of the day, once you've got it done, it does look good. Another element is images. Now, these need to be 300 dpi because it's print, obviously, and the bigger the better because we did get quite a few clients uh, sending in articles with tiny images. And, you know, it might work well for web, but in print you need massive images. Um, which is something we really had to try and get across to them. So once everything's been edited and you've got all the proofs signed off, you need to export it for print. Now, this for me is the most stressful part because I get really paranoid that there's still things like errors in there. And as a matter of fact, there was. We had to go in and edit a few things just before we sent it off to print. Um, but it is made a bit easier. We have got presets um, that we set up. So this is all set up with the pages, the compression, and it's got the marks, crop marks and bleed on there. Because when you send to print, you need crop marks so they know where to cut the paper. And a bleed, so just if, it, if it's just a little bit off, then you know, it doesn't cut off an image or whatever. And the ink manager as well to make sure that all the colors are in there. Because if you send it off and the printer doesn't have that color, again, it gets messy. And that's the paper. So. It comes out like this, got a nice paper, and somewhere in there it's got our name on it as well. So that's always nice to see. So to summarize, it was a bit of a time consuming project and there's quite a bit of stress, like trying to get content in and stuff and meeting deadlines. But overall it was a really enjoyable experience. 
I mean, I'm also an assistant editor of a Doctor Who news site, so I love this kind of thing. And yeah, just putting it together is really fun for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into one of our recent projects. And don't forget, we've also got creativeastro.tv with lots of tips and tutorials. So once you've watched this, head over there, watch some videos and subscribe. And we'll see you again in the near future.